Welcome back to another video about the Cursed Macintosh SE30. In the previous episode, we built permanent mounting brackets for the CD-ROM drive, the Jazz drive, and the SCSI to SD that's in here as the hard drive. And I may or may not have a little bit destroyed the case, trying to strip off the original black paint to redo it. And many of you said that the front casing is now too far gone, even though I spent many hours sanding and priming and redoing this thing, but I don't think we should just toss this thing. So today, let's treat this Mac like a 1978 Pontiac Firebird and try to make it beautiful again with a little bit of Bondo. So stay tuned. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. I'm taking this way too far trying to save my mistake using that paint remover that I thought would be safe on this Mac, but instead, ate away into the plastic itself and kind of created this melty appearance. Now, all of you are very divided on whether this is completely ruined and looks terrible with all of this melting or whether this actually makes it look a little bit more cursed. And I don't know, but I kind of lean towards ruined. However, Bondo actually has a long history in case modifications. And if you look back at sites like Apple Fritter, you can see people who've used Bondo in their cases to make some pretty incredible stuff. So while this might not be the most aesthetically pleasing Mac SE30 front, it is still structurally sound and it holds the monitor and all of the screws are intact. So I don't think it's worth just tossing this in the trash. And since we have the clear Mac effects case coming anyway, we always have that backup of just using that whole brand new case. So what I wanna do is use this Bondo to not just try to repair some of the detail, which I don't think is possible, but I wanna treat this like a blank canvas to make a whole new front case. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is completely cover and smooth out all of the case detail on the bottom and on the front because I don't think that's salvageable. And hopefully this is gonna look even more unique and professional when we're done. So Bondo historically has been used to fill in dents and stuff on cars, and that's kind of what everybody thinks of it for. But Bondo is really just a brand of body filler. And in fact, 3M, who markets Bondo, they market Bondo in all sorts of different places, the exact same stuff for different uses, like wood filler. A lot of people use Bondo in furniture to repair imperfections in wood and to cover holes and all sorts of stuff. And it makes a lot more sense than you would think in a computer case when you think of what Bondo actually is. It's basically plastic. It's a resin with a hardener that you add and mix in, and it solidifies into, well, something close to what this plastic case is made out of anyway. So what we're going to do is tear apart this case, and then we'll take the front off and we'll take it out back. I'm going to mix up and apply some of this Bondo with these handy dandy little squeegees and then we'll repaint it with some black paint and try to get an interesting pattern. Yeah, and if we take a look back here now, I think we've got things pretty clean and well organized. I've got a couple zip ties here. I put a couple wire holders that are stuck to various metal bits in the back. And I figured out the right order to put everything back in, which it goes in in a very specific order, like a giant electronic puzzle. But everything does fit in here very nice and clean and rock solid. I mean, this stuff is now secured to the metal casing instead of just double-sided tape there like it was when we first found this Mac. And in fact, this was pretty much full of like packing tape that had disintegrated. So I think we've done a pretty good job there. So I think now that it's really well organized in here, it's gonna look awesome when we put the translucent blue case back here. And we're also gonna have that upgrade I keep teasing, which I do have all the way from Germany, which is going to fit in here. There's just enough room for it. So let's tear this thing all the way down once again and take this front case off and see if we can do some Bondo magic.
Oh man, it is finally here. After weeks in USPS purgatory, we finally have our Mac Effects transparent blue case ready to open. And I don't normally do unboxings of things here on this channel, but how many times am I ever going to have the chance to open a brand new injection molded case for a Macintosh SE or SE30? So let's open this thing up together, get the full Mac effects unboxing experience and see what it's like to open a brand new vintage Mac case. So in addition to the case itself, they also sent me something in a padded envelope. So let's open this up and see what this is first. All right. So we have some feet, some plastic clips, and four screws with no explanation. So I assume this is just a, a secondary part of the case that maybe they forgot to pack where this was manufactured. So we'll, we'll see where these go when we put the case together. All right, so here we go. All right, and right on top here, we have some nice instructions along with some stickers for the front of the case. There's some feet in there, but there's also a nice Macintosh SE30 clear sticker, which I'm not sure how well that's gonna look on black, but <laughs> pretty neat that they've included that. And yeah, they're telling us to discharge the CRT and the tools that we'll need to discharge it and mounting the speaker, which obviously in our case, we don't have to mount the speaker because that has been drilled into the back of the case. And here we are. And guess what? We ordered the blue case and we did not get it. We got the standard fully clear case. Huh. Well. That's a little disappointing, especially given how long it's taken for this case to get here after being lost in the postal service for almost three weeks. I mean, this is beautiful. This is an absolutely beautiful case. And in clear, of course, it looks like the prototypes, which is quite cool. And if we use the black front of the case and have just the clear in the back, we'll get a really good view of all of its internals. However, I really was hoping for the blue case. So I guess we'll have to send them a message and let them know. Honestly, it's a little bit surreal holding this case looking like a classic Mac SE but it's brand new and transparent. Why don't we put this next to a real Mac SE and do a little comparison. So here it is next to a real Macintosh SE FDHD, which is what this case is modeled after. But yeah, it's pretty spot on. I mean, of course this is smooth plastic, whereas there's a slight texture to the classic Mac cases, but it's again, pretty surreal seeing these two next to each other this clear case looking like a ghost of <laughs> the classic Mac here. Very cool. I do again, wish this was the blue one that I ordered, but still, I mean, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous reproduction. So I emailed Mac effects and they got right back to me and they were super apologetic. And it turns out that Another person emailed them the same night and they got a blue acrylic case when they had ordered a clear one. So evidently our two cases got mixed up in shipping. Now, just to be clear, I don't blame Mac effects for this at all. In fact, I am a huge fan of all of the awesome stuff that they put out. I've backed two Kickstarters of theirs, both for Apple II stuff and they're just absolutely incredible. So I really don't think it's Mac Effect's fault. In fact, I think there is one single culprit 
upon whom all of the blame can be attached. And that is the curse. That's right, I think that these issues are proof that the curse of the cursed Mac is still in full effect and perhaps now stronger than ever. After Steve from Mac 4 recapped the motherboard and got everything working 100%, I don't think that actually uncursed this cursed Mac. In fact, I think that just made the beast stronger. So here we are with our freshly painted, for a third time, front case for the cursed Mac. And it's not perfect, but man oh man, I went through a ton of trouble doing this. I sanded this down three times in total because each time I did it, there was some imperfection that I just couldn't live with. And now I've got it to this point, and I think this is as good as I'm going to get it. And I gave it four coats of the Paint Plus Primer from Krylon after sanding it down, now with power tools, doing a very gradual stepped sanding, starting from 80 grit to actually shape the plastic back into an interesting and nice curved shape, actually a little more curved than it was originally, and make sure we had as much of the melty stuff gone as possible. And I stepped it all the way up to 1500 grit to make it as smooth as possible so that the paint would come out nice and even, which I'd say about 90% it did. And of course I filled in the lines on the top and the bottom with Bondo, which of course is meant for cars, but as we said, basically just hardens into plastic. And then sanding everything down nice and smooth, now you can just see only the hint of those lines, which actually I think looks kind of cool, but there was no way to salvage the actual lines themselves because down in the ruts of those lines, it was completely melted. And then I used the Dremel to cut out kind of a an indent where the hole is for the speaker knob so now we can very securely fasten it by threading the nut onto the actual potentiometer that pokes through this hole, which we could only get about a half of a thread turn before. So it doesn't look perfect, but I think with the knob covering it, it's gonna look fine. And I think this is a nice kind of flat black paint. You know, it's not too shiny, it's not reflective. It's just a very nice diffused light that falls on it. So I kind of like that. And speaking of using this machine a lot more, next week we are finally going to open what I've been teasing this whole time, this wonderful, incredible package from Germany, which contains just about the rarest possible upgrade for the Mac SE 30, which honestly, I still can't believe that I actually got one. And I think you're not gonna believe it either. So if you don't wanna miss opening this up and installing it, definitely make sure you're subscribed and make sure you have those bell notifications on. But yeah, Mac Effects has already shipped out the correct blue version of this for me, along with the prepaid shipping label to send this one back. And they were super fast about it and super nice. So again, no hard feelings for Mac Effects and I am still a huge, huge fan of everything that they do. All right, why don't we put this thing back together with the newly painted case and just get this ready for that upgrade, which again, we're doing next week, come hell or high water. Cue fast forward montage. Okay, it's all back together and pretty well cable organized again, especially considering just how many cables are floating around in there. And this thing is a huge pain to get back together because you have to put it together in a very specific way and even I forget every time I go to put it back together now. But you actually have to start with, funny enough, the sound amplifier and the switch up front here because that's the only time you're gonna be able to get it all the way up into that hole that I drilled in the case. And then you have to put actually the motherboard in and you have to string the power cable out and then you have to put the drives in and then you have to put the CRT in and then you have to put the analog board in and you have to 
be very careful about where you're running all the wires and stuff because the one time I forgot to plug the amplifier into the motherboard and then there was no way to get to that connector again. I had to take everything out again to get back to the motherboard. So if I was going to create a service manual for the cursed Mac, the first page would just say sorry. Okay, so you have to admit, this thing came out a heck of a lot nicer than either one of us thought it was going to. This front case was pretty much trashed when I tried to use that, what turned out to be a much harsher chemical than I thought it was to remove the old paint so I could repaint it. But now this new coat of paint, after all the many hours of sanding and smoothing and dremeling and fixing and repainting and painting a third time, it, I think it looks pretty good. And it has a very unique aesthetic being totally flat up front, kind of like a Mac Plus. And I think it doesn't look perfect, but it does look cursed. So anyway, let's turn this thing on for the first time since all of that arts and crafts drama and make sure I didn't ruin anything in the process. And there we go. It's alive. Okay, so the way I've hooked everything up now is I have powered the SCSI to SD the jazz drive and the CD-ROM all directly off of the brand new Seasonic power supply that we hacked in here a couple weeks ago. The only things actually powered off of the original SC30 power supply are the computer itself, so like the CRT, the motherboard, etc., and the audio amplifier that we hacked in here. So that's going to give us, I hope, plenty of headroom for that crazy upgrade that we're going to put in here next week. But for now, let's test out the drives and just make sure I didn't ruin any of these things in the process. Ah, the lovely sound of a Seeking Jazz drive. Let's try the original CD that came jammed in the original broken CD-ROM drive that this computer had. All right, that loaded extremely quickly. All right, so as we saw, everything still works, and I think the computer looks pretty good. Uh, dare I say, better than it did before with that original paint job. I think this looks much more monolithic and evil, painted in this matte black with these flat surfaces. All right, so here we are with our nearly finished cursed Mac with all these crazy mods and I gotta tell you I am just as in love with this bizarre little Macintosh as I was the first day we found it for next to nothing on Craigslist. But on that note I think it's time for me to use my the old net serial Wi-Fi modem to play some Deathwish mud online and connect to the captain's quarters Mac specific BBS which is awesome and I'll link to that in the description below. But make sure you're subscribed again because next week we're going to open up the literally the craziest upgrade that you'll ever see probably for Macintosh SE 30 direct from Germany. And I promise this is going to be a super exciting episode. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Macintosh shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Dirk, Justin, Chris, Greg from Rut K Mods, Sorta Eclectic, Spike, and Connor, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters who help make these videos possible.